Is it possible to see Montevideo in just 24 hours? Well, let's find out. If you're new here, my name is Maddie, and while I'm born and raised Australian, I've been living in Uruguay with my husband Alejandro for the last almost four years, and we've been sharing video content ever since. In these four years, we have traveled and explored many parts of Uruguay and Argentina, but mostly we have stayed close to home, learning all the best things to do right here in Montevideo, Uruguay. And while there are so many other regions worth visiting, if you only have 24 hours, you're going to want to stick close to Montevideo so you can pack in as much as possible. So if you want to see what I would recommend for anyone from a single 20-something to a family of five, or anyone else who chooses to visit this country for just a day, then keep on watching. There will also be a free downloadable and printable itinerary available linked in the description. Firstly, if you are arriving in Uruguay for just a day, the chances are you're catching a ferry from Buenos Aires, Argentina, and that means you will arrive right here in Puerto Montevideo. But if you happen to catch an airplane in, then no problem, you will arrive over this part of town in Carrasco Airport, and you could simply catch an Uber, bus, or taxi into Ciudad Vieja to start the tour. Or, for a more detailed 24-hour itinerary with additional options, including a reorganized route starting in Carrasco instead, consider upgrading and purchasing the full guide for just $10. This version will not only have a reorganized route in the reversed order, but it will also have different options for restaurant and cafe suggestions, as well as more information and more options when it comes to tourist attractions. But today, let's assume you're starting off at the port, Puerto Monturer, the Muki bus from Buenos Aires arrives at the port at 10 a.m. most days, so this is when we will start our tour. And the first step is simply to head across the street to the Mercado Puerto, or the port market. Inside the market, you can find many places to eat, a local produce market, art galleries, vendors selling souvenirs, and occasionally live music. It is worth checking out either straight away, or it is open until late afternoon if you would like to come back later for lunch. The port itself is located at the edge of what is called Ciudad Vieja, or Old City, and in the past, this was the main city center, but now it is filled with shops, restaurants, beautiful old buildings, and a variety of museums. I would recommend taking your time to walk around this part of the city. Not only is it beautiful, but this part of the city holds the most culture. So stick to the main streets and plazas if you want to make sure you don't get lost and that you don't miss out on any of the major attractions. While there are professional guided tours available in this area, if you prefer to go at your own pace, this is what I would recommend seeing. Firstly, walk down Sarandi. This is a street or calle and it is the perfect path to take you right from the port all the way to Plaza Independencia where the old city meets the new. This street is known for being pedestrian friendly as it is closed off to vehicles. This street also holds a lot of historical significance with a lot of beautiful old buildings. Many of them are now converted into apartments or as art galleries and museums. There are also an abundance of restaurants, cafes, and occasional street vendors out selling their crafts along the sides of the narrow street. This area also has a lot of palm trees, making it an interesting mix of European style architecture and more South American feeling nature. Just off of Sarandi to the left, you'll find Plaza Zabala. Surrounded by beautiful buildings, the plaza itself has a big statue dedicated to Bruno Mauricio Ne Zabala, the founder of Montevideo. Zabala was a Spanish military officer and the founder of the city in the early 18th century. The statue serves as a tribute to his role in establishing Montevideo and as a strategic military outpost. You'll often find Uruguayans taking their lunch breaks, sitting in this plaza, drinking mate, or playing in the playground with their kids. Plaza Zabala is one of the oldest squares in Montevideo and is worth checking out if you have a moment to spare. Continuing down Sarandi, you'll find Patio Mainombi. It is a small little garden off to the right. Stop in here to see the native plants, smell the flowers, or just to take a break from the main city park. If you are craving a snack or coffee, I would highly recommend doing it in Ciudad Vieja because this is the perfect place to find a variety of different, both very traditional and more modern cafes. 
Uruguayans love a morning tea or afternoon tea pastry, so there are many bizcocherias or pastry shops around the city that you could try, as well as a number of great coffee shops that offer media lunas, which are essentially croissants or boudin cakes, amongst other things. We headed into a cafe called Culto, which is located on the main walk towards Centro, the city, right before the cathedral and Plaza Matriz. While this is not the most traditional Uruguayan coffee shop, they do offer some vegan options for cakes. De leche, chocolate. Tiene algo vegano? Vegano, sí, eh, la barrita esta. De granola, okay. miel, dátil, mm. chocolate, coco. And usually have almond or oat milk available for coffee which is definitely not a staple in all Uruguayan coffee shops. But if cow's milk or black coffee are not a problem for you, then there are many other coffee shops you could try. And a few steps further, you will find the Monterrey Metropolitan Cathedral or Cathedral de la Inmaculada Concepcion y San Feliz y Santiago de Montevideo. The name in Spanish is a little bit longer. The construction of the Montevideo Metropolitan Cathedral began in 1790 under the direction of the Spanish architect Tomás Toribio. And while of course this cathedral has religious significance, it also has a cultural significance in Montevideo. There are tours available or you can simply walk in and look around the beautiful building. This cathedral was also recently included in the film The Society of the Snow, which has brought Uruguay more attention internationally. Leaving the cathedral, you will find Plaza de la Construcción Matriz. While on three sides of this plaza, you will find historic buildings, cathedrals and museums. On the fourth side, you will simply find a McDonald's and other fast food style lunch places. And while these are not specifically a tourist attraction, it is always nice to know where there is a bathroom located. So if you ever need one, head upstairs in the McDonald's and you're good to go. The plaza itself contains a large fountain and is surrounded by these gorgeous trees. And most days the plaza walkway is lined with markets selling jewelry, trinkets, souvenirs or artwork. Opposite the cathedral on the other side of Plaza Matriz, you will find Museo Historico Cabido de Montevideo. I hope I pronounced that right, but this museum, this the Cabido, is an iconic building with historical importance. It served as the seat of government during the colonial period and witnessed key events in Uruguayan history. The museum is housed in a colonial style building that dates back to the 18th century. It is a well-preserved example of Spanish colonial architecture. This building is also the site where the Declaration of Independence for Uruguay was signed on August 25th, 1825. This event marked Uruguay's separation from Brazil and its emergence as an independent nation. Continuing down Sarandi, this section of the street is usually filled with craft and gem stalls, little street markets selling souvenirs, mates, and more. Down a little further is the Plaza de Diversidad Sexual, however this plaza is more rainbow concrete than green nature. The plaza itself was painted in bright colours and has flags flying, but otherwise there's just a couple of benches to sit and rest if you need a little break from the main street. In this area you will also find a Starbucks. Now while I'm not recommending this for cultural significance, this is a great place to go if you need free Wi-Fi or to use a bathroom. Also, it is one of very few coffee shops within Uruguay that I have found to consistently have soy milk on the menu. So if you have issues with dairy but love coffee, then Starbucks truly is your friend in Uruguay. Now we come to the Puerta de la Ciudadela. This archway used to be connected to a fence that lined the whole Ciudad Vieja, but now the archway is in the center of a main street and still symbolically separates Ciudad Vieja from Centro or the city. From here, you could choose to go right to see Teatro Solis, a big theater on the edge of Ciudad Vieja, or you could go straight through the archway into Plaza Independencia or Independence Plaza. Within Plaza Independencia, you'll find a mausoleum to Artigas. There's also a large monument statue dedicated to José Ravias Artigas. I'm so sorry for my pronunciation, but Artigas is a national hero and the leader of Uruguay's fight for independence. If you head down these stairs under the plaza, you will find a lot more history lining the walls, and in this room is where his remains have been laid to rest. The plaza is surrounded by a number of important buildings, one of them being Palacio Salvo. 
This was once the tallest building in South America and it is now a symbol of the city. You can stay in this building. There are a couple of Airbnbs or hotel rooms available within the building. Although I will say there are rumors of some ghost hauntings. Between Palacio Salvo and Teatro Solís, you will find the government buildings including Torre Ejecutiva, Executive Tower or the workplace of the President of Uruguay, as well as the Estreves Palace, which houses the offices of the Vice President. Once you've walked through the plaza, the main road is called Dieciocho de Julio, or 18th of July. This commemorates the date when the process of independence from Spanish colonial rule began. Walking down the street, you are now in downtown or modern, Monterrey, the modern city. And while there are a couple of interesting things to see, it's mostly filled with office buildings, stores, restaurants, and being in the new city, it does have less cultural significance. So it's up to you if you want to spend your time exploring and grabbing something to eat here or if you'd rather catch an Uber or taxi directly towards Bositos instead. When you leave the city to head towards Bositos, ask your driver to take you along La Rambla for the best views. Along the way, you can see lots of people out walking, rollerblading or riding their bikes, as well as look out through the window across the sparkling ocean. Along the way, if you would like an extra stop, take a stop in Parque Roro and walk around this large green park with a lake within it. The park itself is surrounded by restaurants and discotecas or nightclubs and there is also an amusement center nearby. The park has rides and games for all ages and you can purchase tickets for individual rides or buy a packaged deal. Then simply continue on to Positos. When you arrive in Positos, there are a number of things you can do here. Castillo Pitamiglio is a quote, castle style building. It is very strange looking from the front, but it is very worth exploring. Guided tours are at 4 p.m. and 6 p.m. most days, but see the printout for more details. The castle itself is designed with a lot of optical illusions as well as old architecture and is simply a fun way to spend an hour right by the beachfront of Positos. This neighborhood is also great for grabbing lunch, coffee, or ice cream, with a number of options lighting the beachfront and more just one street back. So why not grab an ice cream or helado and go for a walk along Positos Beach. You can walk along the footpath or La Rambla or on the sand right along Positos Beach before emerging at the other end right by the Montevideo sign or Letras de Montevideo. This sign is repainted every month in fresh colors and is the perfect place to take your travel photos. From here you would have an excellent view of the sunset which happens at around 7 to 8 p.m. in the summer or a little earlier at 6 p.m. in winter. Alternatively, you could walk just around the corner and watch over the boats in the boatyard as the sky begins to darken. You'll often find couples or families sitting down on the grass with their mate watching the sky change colors and it is a very peaceful way to start transitioning into nighttime. Eventually, I recommend making your way to Carrasco. The main attraction here is the casino. But other than this, there is a nice beach, many small stores, restaurants, bars, and expensive houses to look at if you want to walk around. This neighborhood is known for being more expensive, so many more wealthy people live here. And this is pretty obvious when you start looking around and seeing the differences in their homes versus the ones in other areas. And this is also the perfect place to come if you have just arrived at the airport in the morning I would come to Carrasco first, see some of the sites, have a coffee, and then work my way backwards through this list. But if you are here at night, I would go to Mercado Arocena to experience a variety of food options, perfect if you have picky eaters within your group. And one of the restaurant options within this Mercado is a parrilla, otherwise known as a traditional Uruguayan barbecue. They also have dessert stores and a bar if you want to stay and have a couple of drinks. But in terms of the nightlife, 
The Uruguayans, like most Latin American countries, do everything just a little bit later. Most Uruguayans might have dinner anywhere from 9 p.m. to about 11 p.m. So expect restaurants to stay open late and for some dinner spots to only open at 8 p.m. For dinner, those of you who enjoy meat, I would recommend a traditional Uruguayan asado or parrilla barbecue. I will include a couple of options in the $10 download. Or if you're looking for more of a dinner and a show experience, I highly recommend Bar Fun Fun, or as the Uruguayans would say, Fun Fun. This bar also serves pizza and other meals, but the main attraction is the tango performance. So while you sit down at your table, have a couple of drinks, eat your pizza, there is a tango performance happening on the stage up front, and then at about 11.30 p.m., this transitions into live music and the bar continues into the early hours of the morning. After this, if your night is done, you can head back to your accommodation and sleep until the boogie bus arrives again in the morning, or you could choose to party the night away at a club instead and really make the most of those 24 hours. After 2am, if you want to keep the party going, there are many nightclubs in Montevideo that open at midnight and often the party doesn't even really start until about 2 or 3 a.m. Entry requirements will vary, most being 18 and over, but other clubs such as Volve Mi Negra are only for over 25s. These clubs typically stay open till about 6 o'clock in the morning, with some having an after party until 8 or 9. Some options include the Lotus Club, Volve Mi Negra, Casa Uma, or Blas Life. Opening times and more information will be provided in the printouts. So what do you think? Is this enough to pack into a 24 hour vacation? For any Uruguayans watching, what do you think I have left off of this list that is an essential to see? And for any foreigners watching this to take inspiration for your next holiday, what are you most excited to see or experience when you arrive in Uruguay? Don't forget to check out the free printable itinerary which will cover everything you've seen in this video today. But as I mentioned earlier, if you want more options regarding different museums to see, different restaurant or cafe options, or just a reorganized route if you are entering in Carrasco instead of at Ciudad Vieja, then I would highly recommend upgrading to the $10 version. It has a lot more value to give and I truly do not think you will regret it. We are now also offering consultations privately. If you would like to discuss any of your questions or concerns about your vacation or your potential move to this beautiful country, all of the information regarding this will be in the description box. So head down there for all the links and like this video to see more. We're so grateful you made it to the end and see you next time. Ciao y hasta la próxima.